welcome to the Washington Metropolitan Philharmonic the Chamber Music Series at the Lyceum. This will be our 30th season, and uh, we're delighted to be with you. Uh, we uh, are a, a fairly large association. We have three orchestras, uh, and uh, the first one is the Washington Metropolitan Philharmonic, an adult semi-professional orchestra. Uh, the second one is uh, Washington Metropolitan Youth Orchestra uh, for high schoolers. And the third is the Washington Metropolitan Concert Orchestra for middle school uh, musicians. Uh, we also depend on your donations for our survival uh, and also grants. And so if you'd like to make a donation today, we'd love it. It's uh, uh, listed above me, and you can see it's Washington WMPA.org slash donation. And if you can make a donation today, we'd really appreciate it. Um, we uh, have two wonderful musicians uh, with us today good friends, uh, extraordinary performers, uh, Elizabeth Klugel and uh, John Sutherland Earl, soprano and pianist. Uh, now if you want to learn more about them, um, their bios plus the translations for the, the songs that Elizabeth will s sing are all on this website. So all you have to do is go down to show me, show more, and you'll be able to see them. Um, now, about J John. John has been a um, uh, performer at this, uh, in this series for about 10 years, off and on. And I was always enthralled by one thing, and that is the extraordinary care that he takes in performing. There's nothing that he hasn't looked at and done to prepare. And his playing is magical because it is so precise and also so emotion laden. It's wonderful. And uh, in fact, uh, this past year or this past season, uh, John uh, played with the orchestra and uh, he played the uh, Beethoven Emperor Concerto. It was marvelous. It was one of the most fun things I've done. And incidentally, I'm the artistic director of the Washington Metropolitan Philharmonic and uh, the conductor. And uh, in addition, John was uh, working on something last summer with uh, the need for more uh, instrumentalists to help him out. And uh, so he came to me and asked if uh, I had some suggestions, and I did. And at, at the same time, he told me about this marvelous soprano he was working with. And he knew that I was looking for someone to be able to work with Washington Metropolitan Philharmonic uh, over the coming season to do songs from the American Songbook prior to every concert. And he recommended Elizabeth Klugel. Well, Elizabeth and I got together and um, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt it's the easiest collaboration and the most fun collaboration I could possibly have imagined. Elizabeth is so easy to work with, so flexible, so good, and their voices is magic. And uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, she is what I would call a totally capable singer, because she, she can sing opera, and she can sing the songs from the American Songbook the way they should be sung. She's a total, total musician. 
So with all of that said, I'd like uh, to introduce them now. And I, in, I, I, I'm sure you will spend the next hour in total enjoyment. What can we, what can we poor fears do when pressing 
teasing, pressing, teasing on us so. What can we, what can we, poor, poor females do? What can we, what can we, poor, poor females do? Fate affords no other way.
Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, this is such a thrill for John and I to get to do this program during this time of, of lack of performance. It's a real joy and blessing for us to, to be able to bring this to you today. The last set that you just heard was uh, composed by Henry Purcell, uh, 1659 to 1695. Uh, he was an English Baroque composer, probably the most renowned English Baroque composer. Uh, and he was the most famous English composer until about the 20th century with Elgar, Vaughan Williams, Walton, and Britton. Purcell is honored, uh, his esteem was so great that he's honored with uh, Johann Sebastian Bach and, and Handel on the feast day in the Episcopal Church on July 28th. Um, the next set that we're doing is by Ernest Chausson, a French composer, 1855 to 1899. He was a romantic composer who died just, just as his career was beginning to flourish. He left behind only about 39 opuses, uh, opus numbered pieces. Um, and for him, com composition was always a, a difficult thing, a struggle. So uh, it, it is such a joy to have discovered these pieces years ago, and they're little gems to me. Um, he was also influenced by Wagner, and, and the uh, Strauss set that I'm doing later, you can also hear the influences of the time of, of uh, Wagner. I will be reading these translations just in case you don't happen to, happen to have handy the translations. The first song, A.B., is um, speaking of, uh, about uh, the Gre uh, Greek um, boy who was the uh, divine cupbearer of the gods. And here's the poem. When Ebe, guileless and with lowered gaze, Blushingly drew near their feast, the delighted gods proffered their empty goblets, which the child replenished with nectar. And we too, when youth fades, vie in proffering her our goblets. What is the wine she dispenses? We do not know. It elates and enraptures, having smiled with her immortal grace, Ebe goes on her way. You summon her in vain. For a long time still on the eternal path, we follow the cupbearer with weeping eyes. Thank you. 
les papillons, butterflies. Snow-colored butterflies swarm over the sea, beautiful white butterflies. When might I take to the azure path of the air? Do you know, O oh beauty of beauties, my Jedi Bayadere? Were they to lend me their wings, do you know where I would go? Without kissing a single rose, across valleys and forests, I'd fly to your half-closed lips, flower of my soul, and there would I die. Les troncs des lilas. The time for lilac and the time for roses will return no more this spring. The time for lilac and the time for roses is past. The time for carnations, too. The wind has changed. The skies are sullen. And no longer shall we roam to gather the flowering lilac and the beautiful rose. Spring is sad and cannot bloom. Oh, sweet and joyous springtime that came last year to bathe us in sun. Our flower of love is so far faded that your kiss, alas, cannot rouse it. And what do you do? No blossoming flowers, no bright sun, and no cool shade. The time for lilac and the time for roses with our love has perished forevermore. Oh, <laughs> 
La cigal, the cicada. Oh, cicada, born with fine days, poised from dawn on the green branches, happy to drink a little dew. And king-like, you always sing. Blameless to all, peaceful and without guile, the happy worker, shaded by the oak tree, hears you in the distance heralding summer. Apollo praises you as highly as the muses and Zeus has given you immortality. Hail, wise child of ancient earth, whose song invites eyes to close, and who, beneath the intensity of the Attic sun, having neither flesh nor blood, lives like the gods. Thank you. 
Next three songs are from a set uh, of three called Three Dickinson Songs by Andre Previn, who was a German-American pianist, composer, and arranger and conductor. His career, um, he started by arranging uh, Hollywood film scores and um, scored more than 50 in his career and received um, four Academy Awards and 10 Grammys for his work. Uh, he was the music director of many uh, notable Philharmonic orchestras and uh, was also um, influenced in jazz and was a pianist interpreter of the Great American Songbook. Uh, and he also was influenced by jazz in his own compositions, which you'll hear in these next three songs. Uh, the poems, I think, take um, a special note in that they are, um, of course, by Emily Dickinson. But uh, as John and I discussed in working on these, um, in this dark time, they were, they were strangely comforting because they speak of someone else in a time who was in a dark place and looked for light and looked for mourning. Uh, ultimately, I think in the poems, she, she talks about retreating to her darkness. But, but the, the light is there, and, and the hope is there. And uh, we fell in love with these songs, so we hope you enjoy them.
For our final uh, offering of songs today, uh, we brought bringing you four songs by Richard Strauss, German composer, <coughs> excuse me, from 1864 to 1949. Um, he is considered by many the leading composer of this era of the, of the late Romantic, early modern. And as I said earlier, he was also influenced by Richard Wagner and Franz Liszt. Um, and uh, I, I find in Strauss humor, uh, incredibly beautiful melodies, but also some wonderful humor, which hopefully you will get in the last song. <laughs> Our first song today is uh, a cradle song, Wiegenlied. I, I feel like almost every major German composer has composed a Wiegenlied, and this one is particularly beautiful. Dream, dream, my sweet, my life, of heaven that brings the flowers. Blossoms shimmer there, they live from the song your mother sings. Dream, dream, bud, born of my anxiety, of that day the flower of unfolded, of that bright morning, bright with blossom, when your soul opened to the world. Dream, dream, blossom of my love, of the silent, of the sacred night, when the flower of his love made this world my heaven.
Ich schwebe, I float. I float as if on angels' wings. My foot hardly touches the earth. In my ears I hear a sound like my love's farewell greeting. It sounds so sweetly, gently, softly. It speaks such tender, timid, pure words. The tune still sounds and lulls me gently into bliss-laden dreams. My glistening eyes, while I'm filled by the sweetest of melodies, see my love, without clothes or veil, pass smiling by. Die Nacht, the night. Night steps from the woods, slips softly from the trees, gazes about her in a wide arc. Now beware. All the lights of this world, all the flowers, all the colors, she extinguishes and steals the sheaves from the field. She takes all that is fair, 
takes the silver from the stream, takes from the cathedral's copper roof the gold. The bush stands plundered, draw closer, soul to soul. Ah, the night I fear will steal you too from me. Tendelai, mother talk. Just look at my pretty child with his golden tassels of hair, blue eyes, red cheeks. Well, folks, do you have such a child? No, folks, you don't. Just look at my sweet child, fatter than a fat snail, sweeter than a sugar roll. Well, folks, do you have such a child? No, folks, you don't. Just look at my lovely child. Not too moody, not too choosy. Always friendly, always happy. Well, folks, do you have such a child? No, folks, you don't. Just look at my gentle child. No wicked shrew would love her mother so. Well, folks, do you want such a child? Oh, you'll certainly not get mine. Let a merchant come along. One hundred thousand dollars let him pay. All the gold on earth. Oh, he certainly won't get mine. Let him buy one somewhere else. (laughs) 